There's a beautiful story that captures the opening theme of the chapter, Vayera. The story goes in the Bible that Abraham circumcised himself at God's commandment in last week's chapter, and now he's sitting and healing from the circumcision because he was an older man at the time. And the story goes that he was st- sitting at the door of his tent and allowing the sun to heal him. And so the chapter begins in a very dramatic fashion. Vayera love of Hashem. That God appears to Abraham. Actually from here we learn the mitzvah of vis- visiting the sick. Because God visited the sick. He visits Abraham in his uh, healing. And we also learn from that that uh, we help people heal when we visit them. So here's the story. One of the Rebbes, one of the Hasidic Rebbes, his name was the Rebbe Rashab, when he was a child of around five years old, his birthday always coincided with this chapter in the Torah. So he went into his grandfather, who was the great Rebbe at the time, known as the Tzemach Tzedek, and went in for a blessing for his birthday. When he enters into the room, he starts crying. So his grandfather says to him, why are you crying? He says, I just learned in the chapter in the Torah that God appeared to Abraham, and I'm crying why he doesn't appear to me. So the Tzemach gave an answer. He said to him, when a Jew or a tzaddik at age 99 decides to circumcise himself, he's worthy for for God appearing to him. But this story is a very beautiful and powerful story. Many of us cry over all kinds of things. Some people cry when they lose money. Some people cry when they fall. Some people cry over uh, a sad movie. Some people cry for foolish things. And sometimes we cry, unfortunately, for true tragedy. Here's a story of a five-year-old boy that didn't cry because he was in physical pain. He didn't cry because he lost something. He cried because he can't see God. This is an unbelievable lesson in sensitivity. You know, sometimes you stand in front of a beautiful, awesome sight in nature, and you just begin to cry. Why do you cry? It's not sadness. It's like the awe takes over. It's like you sense there's something much greater than you are and how small you are. So one important lesson we learn from this is that there are times we have to step back and just look at life and remember that there's a deeper truth to life. There's an inner truth. This little boy, of course, would grow up to be a great rebbe, so he had that sensitivity. But just the crying itself is a powerful lesson of sensitivity to the world to understand there's a greater reality than ourselves. And yes, sometimes it's worthy to cry and say, you know, why don't I see that? Many people question, where is God? Why God doesn't appear? But maybe there are reasons that God conceals himself. But it's important to cry that when you see the world is not working well, when you see that things are not aligned, not in harmony, you cry for it, even if your life is working out, but the world is not really a complete place yet. And then, of course, there's the second lesson, the answer that the Samach Tzaddik tells his grandson. He says to him, when a tzaddik, a man, decides at 99 to circumcise himself, he's worthy that God appeared to him. In other words, there's a price to pay. Whatever the, the mystical and the deeper reasons of God's concealment, whatever they may be, but there are times that God appears himself when we pay the price. And just to say, I want God to appear is not enough. Sometimes you have to do something about it. It's a two-way street. It's a partnership. And that's one powerful lesson that each of us can learn about the sensitivity of a man like Abraham sitting there healing and how God appears to him. And in truth, that means we all have the power for God to appear to us. God's appearance doesn't always happen in some magical way. It's sometimes just sensing a higher truth. Sometimes you walk down the street and you just sense there's a deeper reality. And that is really what God is, uh, is a form of godliness in your life.